What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So I'm bringing you an updated build guide to Heartseeker. This is by far my favorite and best build that I have played this season and probably one of my favorite builds overall that I've played in almost a year of Diablo 4. This build is in insanely fun and I've just been thoroughly enjoying it. So today we're going to go over the full build guide. We're going to go through the skills, the gear, a lot of uh, choices here and some other options that you could do for the build and kind of just help you guys understand how the build works. And then we're going to just showcase a tier 100. So um, let's go ahead and go right over to skills real quick and break some stuff down. So in the guide, I, I did a couple different ways. We'll talk about this. So we have Heartseeker. Heartseeker is our basic attack. This build right off the bat is solely based on lucky hit chance and vulnerable damage, okay? And we'll get into that in a little bit when we get into gear. So we got Heartseeker into primary Heartseeker for the Ricochet to deal more damage, okay? Awesome. We need to get this up to 12 ranks. There's a few ways to do this, um, but we'll talk about that in just a sec. Next, no core skills. We're maxing out Sturdy for damage reduction because we are Fragile uh, as a rogue. We have one point into Siphoning Strikes just for lucky hit to be able to heal, which is very good. Then we're gonna come down, and here's some other options, and there's a lot of stuff you can do here. So we want one point in the shadow stat. This is just our only form of unstoppable, um, unless you end up taking concealment, which is also good. We max out weapon mastery for more vulnerable damage. We're gonna take Caltrops as our main trap ability. You need this not only for the extra crit chance, but the 60% multiplicative damage that we're gonna get against enemies. And we're putting this into uh, discipline Caltrops. Uh, we max out <clears throat> concussive for the crit chance against downed enemies. And one point into try attacks for dazed. When they are knocked down, we get more crit strike uh, against them. We got dash with enhanced dash. This is just for extra crit strike damage and to apply some stun. Um, or excuse me, we don't do stun. That'd be on the other one. Um, or dazed. You only need the extra point here. However, you could go into discipline, but you don't really need it. Now, these four points here are kind of where... There's a lot of different options that you can do. So I just opted for a little bit more damage reduction against damage over time effects, as well as um, control impairing effects in this game, because it seems like we get CC like crazy. However, these points can be put into a lot of different places. You could do stutter set for more move speed. I don't think you need it because you're already insanely fast. You could max out siphoning strikes. You could add more points in the Caltrops for um, extra cooldown. Um, you could add more points into Smoke Grenade for longer dazes. Um, so there's there's a few options here, but I just opted for that. Next, we're going to come down. We max out Agile. We max out Exploit and Malice for a lot more damage. We're going to max out Dark Shroud here into Subverting for even more move speed to help increase our clear speed so we can move faster. However, you can do Countering. While you always have two, you should always have Dark Shroud active. You'll get 8% crit chance, which is good. We do smoke grenade into countering smoke grenade. So we're going to not only daze them, which helps with our crowd control and our damage multipliers, but then we get 25% increased damage against them. Huge. This is very, very good for bosses. We're going to take three points into frigid finesse because we are freezing absolutely everything. So 30% multiplicative damage is insane. Next, we're going to grab one into adrenaline rush just to get to haste. So we have more move speed. Now, I have played with a few different powers here. I have played with Concealment. I have played with Poison Trap, which I really enjoyed. And I also played with Death Trap, which is very cool. So that all three of those are more than viable. You basically have a free skill here on your bar, which is your, your final sixth skill. Um, shout out to uh, Death by Toaster, community member. Longtime community member, he goes, do Shadow Clone. This is so good for clearing and so good against bosses. This is the Shadow Clone Jutsu build. I absolutely love this. Now, we're going to go down and get into Victimize. Now, Shadow Clone is going to be good for just clearing. And we're going to be able to, you guys think, oh, hey, 54 seconds is a long time. We're going to be able to get Shadow Clones back faster than you think. I'll explain when we get to gear. We have Victimize. Now, this is how this build works flourishes so on a lucky hit you dealing direct damage to a vulnerable enemy has a 50 percent chance to cause it to explode which is what you'll see on the screen or you guys have already seen it it's dealing 402 percent of its original damage to the initial enemy 
in surrounding enemies. Victimizer's damage is also increased by 120% multiplicative of vulnerable damage. My current bonus is 1,648% multiplicative. This is how we do so much damage, okay? You do not need crit damage. You don't need anything like that. You need as much vulnerable damage as possible, lucky hit, and attack speed, okay? Because we are a basic build, we're not spending any of our energy. So we are just, just basically spamming Heartseeker, crowd controlling, and then blowing them up with vulnerable damage. So let's go over the gear pieces and some of the choices that I made for this build. Um, and shout out to Demon Muppets for suggesting the God Slayer. So I initially was running Shaco. Shaco in the helmet is very, very good. Obviously, you get the... 20% damage reduction, four ranks, it's like about 25% multiplicative damage, or not 25 multiplicative, but it's 25% more damage on Heartseeker because you get the extra four ranks. So you are going to lose a little bit of life here, but that's okay. Um, however, after doing runs tonight with Godslayer, the pull in from Godslayer and 60% multiplicative damage for three seconds is just nuts for clearing and then when you stagger the boss which is very quick 60 percent damage all the time against the boss for like the entire duration while he's staggered which is insane now the one negative to god slayer is that for three seconds on an elite pull you get the damage and then we got to wait 12 seconds for it to pop back up and do it again however you will see in the run that it, it works very very good and we actually when it pulls in we blow up these enemies much like much easier, especially the elites. Uh, let's go into our chess piece. We got Umbris here. This is what's going to give us a free Dark Shroud. Dark Shroud is very important for survivability. All right. You're going to want ranks to Dark Shroud and as many as possible. We need to make sure we get this over 10. In our gloves, we're doing concussive strikes. So on a lucky hit, we daze them. And then we get increased damage against dazed enemies. And also when the boss is staggered, this multiplier is on the boss. Again, you want attack speed, lucky hit, vulnerable damage. Okay, we even though we do crit, vulnerable damage is way more important than anything else because it's a 120% multiplier against whatever our total vulnerable damage is, which is insane. In our pants, we're doing shared misery, which is probably the MVP power of the build. Okay, we got pants here. You want plus the heart seeker. I have double crit on heart seeker. Hopefully we get it on the third one. That would be insane. But when we hit a crowd control enemy, which is always 50% chance for that crowd control uh, effect to spread to other enemies, this is insane. Now, how do we crowd control? We have a few different options here. Uh, we have a bunch of lucky hit on our gear. So lucky hit to freeze, lucky hit to freeze, lucky hit to stun, and then we have lucky hit to vulnerable. My lucky hit is 67%. When I pop our elixir of advantage, I go to 75% lucky hit. So you are going to see when we go through this that we just freeze, stun, and immobilize absolutely everything. Um, next, we have Hectic. This was something that, this is kind of a free slot. I tried, um, there was another one I tried where you do additional damage against freeze enemies, which is good. Uh, you can also do Undying. That's a big one that people talk about with Rogue because we're so fragile, right? Like, we, we we get a lot of health, but, you know, we if we take a couple hits, if we don't dodge, then we take a lot of damage. Uh, for speed farming, you don't need Undying whatsoever unless you have issues with that. You do have nine potions. You should be fine. For pushing, I would definitely suggest maybe dropping Hectic, move um, Shared Misery to the boots, and just put on Undying, and then you should be good to go. But Hectic, after casting a basic skill to reduce cooldowns, this is the main way we're going to be able to pop smoke grenades all the time, as well as get our Shadow Clone Jutsu back. It's so easy. We cast this multiple times in a run. On our bow, we want Moonrise for the increased uh, attack speed, right? And Or, excuse me, increased, um, yeah, increased attack speed, damage, and movement speed, huge. On our daggers, we opted for daggers. Now, I did talk to Deoxide. Shout out to Deoxide, Max Roll's uh, rogue writer. He advised me that having daggers as opposed to swords, there's no major difference in the damage. Um, if you do choose daggers, you will have a little bit faster attack speed overall, but it really doesn't matter because you're attacking with a bow. 
So you could do daggers if you'd like, no problem. If you want to do swords, you can do that too. But we have intercom for just flat damage. However, intercom could also be swapped out for elementalist. This is also very, very, or, um, what is it? Elemental where it cycles through the different legendaries or element damage. That's also very good. I just like the flat damage and against bosses for sometimes moments. I can triple this bonus if I get to stay still long enough. We got rapid, of course, for increased attack speed. Uh, in our ring, we got Edge Masters because our resource is always going to be full. Then we got Retribution for distant enemies, the chance to be stunned, and then we deal 30% multiplicative damage against stunned enemies or knocked down enemies. On these, you're really looking for lucky hit everywhere, attack speed everywhere. Now, a big way that I make enemies vulnerable is on this ring. On lucky hit, you have a chance to make enemy vulnerable for three seconds. It has never failed me. So get a ring like this. Otherwise, you could do a cursed touch. That's the only other main way to make enemies vulnerable, but this is perfectly fine. I haven't had any issues. Last and not least, and probably the hardest piece of gear to get on this build is your amulet. So we're running adaptability for the increased damage to our basic skills. Um, however, on the amulet, you want lucky hit chance, ranks to malice ranks to exploit that is the best in slot amulet for this build however if you're like me i don't have that so the next best thing is attack speed crit chance and lucky hit this has worked flawlessly it's been a great amulet but if you do get the other amulet with malice and exploit you will be perfect um our specialization is inner sight we get the increased crit chance um, when we're just dealing damage when the thing is full huge right we're spamming next let's go into the paragon board again guys all of this will be linked down in the description below but i just want to show you what we have here so we got ambush for more damage against uh enemies that are affected by our traps which is caltrops we got chip for more damage we got control for damage against cc when we freeze it's huge exploit for more vuln damage we got pride for even more damage against healthy enemies ranger for more damage with our bows okay now there is a few tricks in this board okay the big trick is using uh no witnesses for this one right here for training with pride so with pride we get a huge amount of life here 10 percent on the glyph itself and then 18 more percent here uh no no it's 10 percent to this yeah yeah so we get a lot of extra life here it's a nice little trick um we also get some attack speed notes here we need to have at least seven point three percent attack speed from our glyph to help hit some attack speed modifiers and that's it i do want to give a big shout out to the uh, guy whose board was inspired by i just want to make sure i get this right efficient rogue shout out to efficient rogue um a few of the things in this board we definitely had to do an increase to hit our res maxes so this has been really really good um we do double dip in deadly ambush but we take that cheap shot as well as exploit weakness which is huge so this build is very very good we actually get to max out our poison res fairly easily so i've really really been enjoying this so yeah guys let's go do a quick little run and i can show you guys the build really quick we're gonna come over here to the potion guy always craft the potion of anti-venom or what is it called anti-venom uh this is going to give us increased life by 15 percent boom and then we're always going to pop elixir of advantage for increased attack speed and lucky hit so now you can see our lucky hit goes to 75 percent now we're going to go do a 100 i just did a 100 earlier but i'm going to showcase a 100 with god slayer again like i've said you're, you want to use this for speed farming i probably wouldn't push anything too much higher than 100 if you get everything to to you know tier 12 and you max out all your gear you could probably do like 105s or something like that but I think for the higher ranks, because of how much more damage the monsters are doing, Shaco is definitely the better the better option I would run. So, But we're going to do a God Slayer so you guys can see how this is going. So let's go ahead and pop. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Uh, yeah, Swords, uh, swords Chimera are, are uh, crit damage. So you can see how it just pulls them in and we just destroy them, right? Like that elite pack just dies. 
The build is just so simple, man. We're, we're going to be using our smoke grenades a lot. Shadow clone, Jutsu. When we pull our shadow clone in against the, the like super big mobs, but we get the pull there, and the elite packs just die. Got to destroy the those guys super easy. Oh yeah, come here. Oh, do not die. They're frozen. You can see how the lucky hit is so high. We CC absolutely everything. This build is so good. I've been having too much fun with it, guys. And again, you really need to lay into your crowd controls. Drop your caltrops as often as you can. Use the smoke grenade as much as you can. And then just drop, like, drop your shadow clones when you really want. Just to help clear out large packs. 15 seconds is a very long time on your shadow clones. I'm waiting for the devs to give us a multi-shadow clone jutsu skill, which would be sweet. Or if there was a way to really just give us like three shadow clones. Maybe there is. Let me know down in the comments, guys. But you can see even right now, we're kind of like speeding this pretty quick. Um, and we blast through this, man. Oh, we got to kill the crowd control guy because those dudes are annoying. 30%, man. Shared misery. MVP power. I'm going to summon the Shadow Clone just to get through this. See ya, dude. Now, concealment can get you from Elite Pack to Elite Pack a lot faster. Um, however, I still, you know, I don't mind it. It's a good way to have another thing of Unstoppable, right? But I've been really enjoying the Shadow Clones. It's It comes in clutch against the bosses. And whoever would have thought that this was the season of basic attack builds. So good. Just run in here and kill these packs, man. So once I get a little bit better, you can probably farm these in three minutes. Yeah, see, the elite pack just gets deleted, man. So nice. Kill the damage. Kill these guys. Love the wallers. Lethal Shrine for the win. Come on. How do wallers have this much life? Get out of here. Knock everything down. Let's go. Yeah, see the pull? See how quickly those guys died from the pull? It's so good. Oh, come on. Give me the... Yeah, there we go. That 60% is just nuts. Let's get the finish, man. Hopefully, we get a good boss for the video. That'd be... That'd be awesome. There we go. All right. Let's kill this boss. Let's kill this boss. Give me a good boss. All right, Blood Bishop. That's not bad. Shadow Clone! You can see the CC that we have. What? Come on. Come on. No, no. He's sucking my blood. Don't like that. That was uh, not expected. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. There we go. This should finish the job. Shadow Clone! There we go. Shadow Clone Jutsu. It's literally the best, and I'm maxed out on Ovals. But yeah, guys. Uh, Heart Seeker for the win. Devs, please don't nerf this. Uh, we've waited three seasons to play Rogue again since season one. So please don't nerf this, okay? Let us keep it forever. We had Rogue in season one. We had to wait three seasons to play Rogue again. So devs, don't mess it up. Either that or if you are going to nerf it, just give us a multi-shot and we'll be happy. But yeah, guys, this is the build. I hope this helps. Enjoy this. This thing is amazing. Again, everything will be down in the description. Like the video. Let's get this to 
100 plus likes. Comment, let me know what you're running differently, especially in the sixth skill slot. Uh, let me know if you're doing anything different than what I'm doing, or if anybody has a amulet, feel free to comment down below. I appreciate your generosity. So guys, so sub to the channel, and as always, stay gaming. See you guys next time. Peace.